This video includes my all-time Astros team through the 2019 season. At pitcher, we have Roy Oswalt. If you want to see some more or hear some more narrative about his accomplishments, check out my all-time Astros team through 2018. There's a playlist that has every team that, that's been done through 2018. I'm not going to do the narrative now for, for the ones that I've already uh, described in the past. You can see from this that uh, he's an all-star three times. He had a great career, and he's the most accomplished Astros pitcher on a career basis so far. At catcher, we have Craig Biggio. It might surprise you to see him at, at catcher because he played most of his career at second base and in the outfield. Um, but he was a great hitting catcher for a few seasons, and the Astros really haven't had a great any other great hitting catcher. So he's there for now. Uh, when the Astros do have a catcher who's, who's a real good hitter, uh, then I'll have to move Craig Biggio to his primary position, which would be second base. Um, unless Jose Altuve continues to excel and gets more points than Craig Biggio, in which case Craig Biggio will be on the second page. But uh, right now he's a catcher until uh, the, someone else develops in that position for the Astros. At first base is Jeff Bagwell, and he had a tremendous career with the team, 334 points by the system that I use. If you want to know more about how these numbers are developed, you can check out the Owls All-Time Stat Details video that's part of the 2018 playlist. At second base, we have Jose Altuve, and you see he got some more points in 2019. It wasn't one of his very best seasons, but it was a really good season. He had 14.8 points, which by the system I use means he was 14.8% better than the average hitter last year which is really good for a second baseman. You see his great years, 2015, 2014 really, through 2017, he was just an awesome hitter. At third base, we have a change. Through last year, Ennis Cabell was at third base. This year, he's going to be replaced with Alex Bregman because Alex Bregman had an excellent 2019 season. Here's a comparison of the two of them. You see Ennis Cabell had played longer with the team. He played with the team over two stints. He had a couple seasons where he did 10% better than average hitting. Alex Bregman only has played four years with the team. Last two years, though, were excellent, much better than, than the, any of those that Ennis Cabell had. Made the All-Star the last two years. Now, by my system, he's got 55 points compared to Ennis Cabell's 45. And uh, hopefully for the Astros fans, he's just just beginning and will pile up more points in the years to come. So here's Alex Bregman's page. At shortstop is Carlos Correa. He didn't get points this year, he didn't get points last year, he was injured this year, but he passed Dennis Menke in the shortstop position, I guess in 2017 in all-star seasons for him. And uh, he's holding out at that position and hopefully he'll be able to uh, be healthy next year and, and add to his point total. Lance Berkman is in the first outfield position. He was a great hitting outfielder. He also played first base a lot, but a little bit more outfield than first base, so I've got him as at as his, as his primary position. But uh, he was a great player with the team, and with 197.7 points, he is their first outfielder, and he'll probably be in their outfield for the uh, rest of my life at least. Cesar Cedeno is in the second position. He had some great seasons in the 70s for the team. And Jose Cruz is in the third outfield position. He had some good seasons in the late 70s and, and early 80s for the team. The second page for the team is the next six pitchers and three hitters who didn't make the first page. This is what it was last year through 2018 but there's a change for 2019 in the pitchers. We see that Justin Verlander had a, another awesome season for the Astros. That gave him enough points to move him ahead of Mike Hampton and Mike Scott. So Mike Scott will be moved off of the team and Mike Hampton will move over a position and Verlander fits in now behind Joe Necro. And here we, so now here we have the new 
uh, second page for the team with Verlander in his new spot pitching. And then uh, Bob Watts and Jim Wynn and Moises Alou fill out the spare the extra hitter spots. And that's not any different than it was through the 2018 season. So here we have the whole team. The first starting lineup is on the left, and then the, the next best players are on the right. You see Nolan Ryan, uh, Roger Clemens are all still there. Here's a view of the numbers that are behind this. Uh, as I said before, you can use, take a look at the Al, Al's all-time stat details video to see how these numbers are developed. It's uh, basically an indication uh, using some basic statistics of how better than average the player uh, did during the season. And you see that uh, players like Jeff Bagwell, 335 points, that's going to be very hard for anybody to beat. Uh, in the past 10 years, in the decade of the 2010s, you see Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Carlos Correa, they, they have arisen as stars for the team and, and made the team. And in the last few years, Justin Verlander came on. Justin Verlander's last two seasons, 39.7 and 48.6, that, those are awesome stats. The only way you get that many points as a pitcher is your ERA has to be like two, two runs less than the league ERA, and you have to pitch at least 200 innings. You have to really be awesome to do that, and he was. Here's a comparison of the current team on the left and the guys that are currently on the team. It's, it's, real, it, it's fun for me. It's interesting to consider who's going who's gonna to make the team, who's coming down the line that might have a chance to make it. And you can see uh, Jordan Alvarez, Julie Gurriel, they, they both have got points in 2019. Um, but they still have a ways to go before they make the team. Hunter Pence came close, but, but now he's not there. Michael Brantley is just starting out. He's probably too old. George Springer has the best chance among uh, the current players to break in. He would be going after Moises at a loose spot in the, uh, in the second page uh, as an extra outfielder. But his 68.1 points versus Moises Alou's 90.3. George Springer will have to stay with the team, stay healthy, and probably have two more years similar to his last year, and then he, he could beat out Moises Alou. If he has a best year, you know, a career season, then maybe he could beat out Moises Alou in 2020. Among the pitchers, Dallas Koichel came close, but he's not on the team anymore, but he had 95 points. He was pretty close to, to beating out Mike Scott or Mike Hampton uh, for a spot. Um, Garrett Cole would have a chance if he stayed with the team. If he had stayed with the team, he has another year similar to his great season in 2019, he would make it. But um, that's up in the air now. We'll see who he signs with and where he winds up. So here's a view of the cards and the players on the team, as well as the points that were used to determine who they were. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please indicate like. I plan on putting up... Uh, the rest of the teams between now and, the, and, and uh, the middle of the 2020 baseball season, maybe one or two a week. So please subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll see more. Thanks. Take care.